Hi everyone, it's Lisa Marie from Artistry by Lisa Marie, and I am back in the studio with this lovely lady right here, one of my coloring pages that I drew the other day. Uh, last time I colored in uh, the main image, and now what I want to do is add some background, uh, just sort of to have a more complete look going on here. And going back to what we discussed previously when I was first coloring her in, you know, I wanted more of a warm autumn feel, especially with the pumpkins and everything going on. And I really like the orange of the pumpkins. And I think it plays nicely with her dress and the berries and the green. And to have a more autumn feel, uh, I've decided to add orange in the background. I'm not actually going to do a lot of background cover. I feel like there's a lot going on in this composition. Uh, so it'll just be a little bit of touch up of a background color uh, just to really enhance the overall image. And if you'd noticed the background, I don't really have a lot of grayscale going on. It's more of a flat, open ended background, which means you can do whatever you want. You can add different textures. You can go with paints and do paint splatter. You can do watercolors and just sort of play with that pastels for a whole other look. I did all of this so far in Prismacolor uh, pencils. So I'm going to stick with the Prismacolor pencil for now, just for consistency's sake. We're going to stick with that. And since it is just a smooth white background, and I love smooth, and I used a cardstock paper, but it's a smoother textured paper, uh, what I'll be doing is just going along with that. And I am still going to stick with my grayscale theme of dark, medium, light. So one, two, three. Uh, so dark medium and light. We'll go with those just for a starting point. And I didn't resharpen my pencils actually from the last time I used them. Uh, this is the same orange I used here. And the reason why was because I want a softer look in my background. Sharp pencils, like super, super sharp pencils that have just been sharpened, they have a very crisp look, which is fantastic for say the face or hair or detail looks. But with a background, if I want something softer, I'll stick with a pencil that's already been dulled a bit. And I'll just get started by adding straight to it a bit of orange. And since this is a grayscale and I've been working with the light and shadow I already have going on. So you see the shadow, shadow, light, light, the light's coming from this direction. I'm going to keep playing with that theme in mind and I'm going to keep coloring with that theme in mind. So if the light's coming from this direction, she would cast a bit of a shadow over here. So that's where I'm going to start my color. That's where I'm going to start adding my color where she would naturally be creating a shadow. Delicate hand, especially with a smooth background where there's not much texture going on. And I love having a bit of a smooth backdrop to a picture. Just a quick layer of color. And you can see already we're getting a nice warm look. And that's just going to play super well with everything else going on. So she has a bit of a shadow. We're going to go with this, I guess you call it a wreath, an oblong wreath that I drew. I don't know. Sometimes I just draw. I don't label what I draw all the time. I just sort of draw it. And then afterwards I look and go, huh, I wonder what that is. When I color it's, or draw it, it's uh, really just the start, the beginning of a journey for a work of art. And it's up to the colorist, you know, up to you to continue the journey, to take it to the next level. You guys do a great job of telling me, you know, how the story ends when I start a drawing.
And what I really love about, you know, when I draw these and I make, uh, I make them printable so you can, you know, print as many copies as you want. It's nice because, you know, in terms of, you know, the art telling a story, you can give it so many different endings because you can print it so many different times. Try different colors, try different techniques, try different mediums. If you don't like how the coloring page ends up the first time, just color it again. I mean, you're in your own home. No one's watching. Just do what you want to do. Have fun. Just a delicate bit of color. And as I'm getting closer to this wreath, that's what we're going to call it now, we're going to call it a wreath, uh, I press a little bit harder and do a few more layers of color just to darken it up. But as I move away from it, I pull my hand up a bit, which naturally lightens the color, so it sort of fades away as I move away from the wreath. That's also why the first layer that I put down is a little bit lighter when I put down a layer of color, so that way it's just easier to build up color where I want to. And I don't have to worry so much about, oh my goodness, I went too dark too fast. When I first started um, studying fine art, I, uh, you know, I would, I would study art and drawing kind of the same way that um, a lot of Renaissance masters did. I studied the same techniques as, like, the same stuff that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci did, Michelangelo did, all those cool guys. You've heard of them. Um... My art tutor, who was amazing, would often come over to me and go, don't go too dark too fast. And that was one of the things I always did, um, especially if I got impatient and I didn't want to wait for the end result. I would just quickly start scribbling stuff in. And uh, it just became sort of her thing, I think, as soon as she walked over to me. Just kept saying over and over again, don't go too dark too fast. All right. And she was actually a fantastic teacher who um, wouldn't even let me use color for the first year that I was studying under her in her art studio, she wouldn't let me use color. I was only allowed to draw in black and white. I had to learn the basics of black and white before I was even allowed to add color. I mean, we're talking that level of strict classical traditional training. You don't get that much anymore. A lot of artists don't get that hands-on classical approach. And I loved it. So again, this is casting the shadow. So I'm doing a little bit more layers there. And as I'm pulling away from there, I'm lifting my pencil up. So it's not as dark away from the wreath. Delicate, light layers of color. So I can always go back and add more color later. But when I first start, I don't go too dark too fast. Seriously, she like said that to me so many times. Pretty sure I started dreaming that phrase. <laughs> um, the light's coming from this direction. So I'm going to hold off on adding too much color over here for the moment. 
I'm going to back over here. Yes, I'm jumping around a bit. Go where I know I'm going to be adding more color because there, it's going to be more in shadow. The sleeve is a very fun, flowy shape. And the shadow should help accent that. It should help exemplify the shape that's already happening here. Again, light coming from this direction, so I'm not gonna go too nuts over here for the moment. This whole area, kinda busy. Definitely more of a shadowy look feel going on we'll add just a nice layer of orange Fill it in, warm it up. All of this area right here, again, very busy. A lot of stuff going on, which means we probably have a few more shadows. So we'll just fill it in. Keeping that delicate touch with the pencil the whole time. This is just the first layer of color. No need to go nuts, don't have to go crazy. All right, now under here, again, we're just sort of playing to that whole concept of there being a light source, which makes shadows. And we are making our shadows with color instead of with the uh, grayscale drawing that was throughout all of the other rest of the drawing. And one thing I also like with a grayscale drawing, you know, something with a lot of realism going on, a lot of detail going on, is a background doesn't have to have a lot. You don't have to do a lot to create a finished feel for the work of art. So if you don't feel like doing a huge, intricate, super detailed background, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You could just leave it white if you wanted. It's whatever you want, whatever you feel like having. Just gonna get this orange in there. Again, we have this beautiful flowy shape with this other sleeve. It's always a little bit on my paper. Always. Oh, 
So already we have a bit of warm started. Put that down. Remember dark, medium, light for grayscale. And I'm going to keep that theme going with my background. And this orange, a little bit more earthy, you know, not as vibrant. It's going to blend with the first layer of orange right on the paper. They're going to work together to create the orange that I want. Painters can mix their paint on a palette beforehand. I mix my colors right on the paper with pencils. And I'm staying near the shadowy part, building up the darker parts first for this background. Still trying to keep that delicate touch, trying to not go too dark too fast. But I'm building up the layers here. So sometimes if I go to an area that's a little bit darker and I know I want it a little bit darker, it's okay to press down a little bit more. Go the other way. If you go in the other direction, sometimes it helps fill in the space. But always keep the hand light, gentle. That way your layers of color will blend together more easily. And you won't get any uh, super jarring transitions of color if that's what you want. If you want those super awesome fun lines of color, then absolutely press down. Have fun. It's a totally different look, a totally different feel. And it can absolutely work if that's your style. Remembering my light source coming from here, so gonna just let up a bit, ease up a bit as I get closer to the light. And then go back to my nice, rich, dark, shadowy areas where I can have fun and put more color on paper. And when I print coloring pages. Uh, I prefer heavier paper. Um, this is a cardstock paper that I use. But I don't want too much texture, especially with Prismacolors and with skin tones. You know, I want that smooth finish. That's a personal preference. I love the smooth look. Um, so I stick with the smooth 65 pound cardstock. And also, I'm using pencils for this particular drawing. So, you know, I don't need the heavier paper, the more textured paper, which I would definitely have to use um, to get a similar look and feel. You know, I'd, I'd need something heavier if I was, say, going to use watercolors, you know, certain markers. I'd have to uh, decide ahead of time the paper I would use that would fit the look that I want. But with pencils, you know, go smooth. Smooth paper, smooth pencil. Works for me. It's easy. It's affordable. It's still fun. And I think affordable is a big part of it. I know people go, oh, art. 
affordable. But um, I think that's what coloring is. Coloring is an affordable, easy access art, form of art. And it's something that everyone can do, everyone can enjoy. And I like that it is affordable. I like that it doesn't break the bank. You know, there's ways to color, you know, an original drawing, bring original art into your home without breaking the bank. I think that's the way it should be. Now what I'm doing is following some of the lines here of these branches, just having a little bit of fun. Making shadows with color. And I do go slow when I color. Um, I go slow when I draw. I go slow when I color. I'm very slow. <laughs> but, um... I think that's just because I'm very particular, which is something, you know, I always say, you know, you don't have to be particular when you draw a color, just, you know, let it happen, have fun. But it's very, you know, full transparency, it's actually very difficult for me to let loose. I personally just always want everything just so. I have something in my mind that I want. And if it doesn't happen on paper, you know, I get frustrated. And I think a lot of people do. And that's another good thing about coloring is, you know, for me, it's great practice for trying new colors, new techniques, playing with color palettes. And it's also a good mental practice. You know, it reminds me it's okay to let go. It's okay to have fun in the studio. It's okay if things don't go exactly the way I've planned or envisioned. And it's okay if I mess up because, hey, it's just me making art. And in my studio, I make the rules. That's not true. If one of my little kids comes in the studio, they pretty much take over and they start making the rules. That's totally different. All right. So now we've built up a little bit of color. I was gonna go with this yellow. Now I'm kind of thinking about this yellow. I think I'm gonna go with this yellow. See? For our third layer of color here. about some yellow and I'm gonna put the yellow over the first two layers of color that I've already done how's that looking looks good and I'm gonna pull it Yeah, sometimes I just sort of stop and look and make sure things are looking okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go over those layers and then I'm gonna pull the yellow to the other lighter areas. Delicate touch still, letting the white of the paper do some of the work for me. Go 
going over the other two layers with this pencil. So it's helping to blend my layers together and it's adding a new color onto the paper. So I'm still mixing my colors on paper. And this yellow is adding to the uh, warmth. Light source is over here. The yellow is a little bit lighter. So it's okay for me to go closer to the light source with my lighter color. doesn't have a very dramatic effect. It's more of a subtle transition in the background. But it will gently warm up this background. And it'll help the leaves stand out. These leaves over here. Do you see how I let the white of the paper stay on some of these leaves? So now, that's going to be the only white in this area. Because the rest of this is orange and yellow background. So that'll really help them pop off the page a bit. And that's what a background, I think, should really do is play well with the main image, the main composition in terms of texture, in terms of color. It should complement it. It's an accessory piece. <laughs> you know, when you make an outfit and get all fashionable, your accessories help emphasize your look. Don't necessarily want them to take over your look just play nicely and emphasize the whole thing same rule with the background although that said you know i've seen some fantastic backgrounds where people do a nice simple coloring and then do beautiful patterns and that is super fun fantastic textures so again I think it just goes back to personal preference and personal style And again, it's not this particular approach. It's not garish. It's not, you know, right in your face sort of color. It's a very subtle approach. I'm all 
Soul Stick. My favorite. I learned about mall sticks, actually, back when I was training with that tutor. She uh, noticed my left hand was always dragging in everything. Like, everything I drew just sort of left a big smear. And uh, one day she just handed me a big stick <laughs> and said, This is a mall stick. Use it. using the yellow to blend my first two layers of color. Going for those more subtle transitions. And if I want it darker, I can always go back and make them darker. You know, I gave myself that leeway by doing very light layers of color. And yes, it does take longer, but I mean, uh, part, part of the coloring journey is the journey itself. It's not about rushing to the final product necessarily. So it's okay if a technique takes a little bit longer. It's not a race. It's something else I tell my kids all the time. It's not a race. Unless there's only one like cup of coffee left in the kitchen, I will totally race anybody to the last cup of coffee in the kitchen. That that is a race. Slowly pulling my background towards the white of the paper, the lighter parts of the paper. Delicate touch as I go. I'm using broader strokes in this big open area, but I'm still trying to keep a delicate touch. So I still maintain those smooth transitions. I pause sometimes too just to again take that step back see how it's looking also sometimes I've noticed my hand covers the paper or covers the uh, view of the paper and then you guys can't see what I'm doing so I pause just to sort of give you a chance to catch up it's hard i <laughs> i did not train to draw with a camera <laughs> on me so my drawing technique developed in a way that it gets in the way of me recording what i'm doing
And my other brush strokes, I went this way. Sometimes on occasion here, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction when I lay down this top layer of blending color, just so I can smooth it out a little bit more. It's a more um, subtle variation of cross hatching. Blending, smoothing. Using my lighter color to connect my darker colors to the white of the paper. In a way, the lighter colors are almost a visual bridge. You know, they, they are the bridge that connects the darker shadows to the lighter areas. If you need another way to think about it. All right, so now we have bit of a background going on um you know and as I look at it maybe I want to push some of the darker areas of the background a little bit more um so I did my dark medium light for the oranges now it's okay to push and I'm actually gonna go with the same brown that I used here and here and I think I used it here yeah, I used it here too so it's a very similar color that's already been used in the drawing which means It'll go with the palette, the color palette that we already have. And what I'm going to do is gently, and I'm telling myself gently, add this to some of the darker areas of the shadow. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but what it's doing is really adding a bit of depth to the background. And really helping the wreath stand out a bit. And we can just follow the line, the lines that we already have of the drawing above. Again, it's not, you know, going to really stand out when you first look at it, but it'll help. emphasize the drawing. And I'm, again, remembering my light source. So I'm only putting shadows where the light would cast a shadow. Go over here. I love her hair. Look at that texture in her hair. I love hair with a lot of texture. And we're just following the shape. That's already been laid out. We've already colored it all in. We're just putting in a slight cast shadow.
to emphasize our drawing. And now at this point, you know, you've colored it in with me, hopefully. <laughs> so it is our drawing. You colored it in with me. So now it's yours too. It's your work of art. Remembering my light source, so the cast shadow will be over here, but as I get closer to the light source, it's going to get smaller and smaller, more and more narrow, until it disappears. Um, the twigs... In my mind, they pop up a bit. So I don't go as close to the edge of the twig. So say this one right here. I'm gonna follow that shape. I'm gonna mimic it, mirror it, but don't go right up against it. And that way it looks like it's coming off the paper a little bit. Still casting a shadow. Let's see, lights coming from this direction. So this guy would have a shadow down here. Still has a shadow. But by following the shape and being a little bit separate, gives it a little more fun realism. So this guy would be over here, his shadow would be over here, so it'd be here, maybe a little bit there. There we go. Lights here, so this guy would be casting a shadow, boom, right there. Just mimicking the shape that was already drawn. is that all right and the shadow you know just like the background should be doing the shadow emphasizes the main image it helps bring it out helps it stand out Even down here, I still try to remember my light source. So the light's coming from here. So there would be a shadow here. Maybe not so much of a shadow on that edge, but there would be a shadow over on this edge. No shadow probably over there, but there would be a shadow under here. Uh, over here. And in busier areas like this, area. Um, I mean, you don't have to play by the rules. It's a busy area. Light and shadows get all jumbled up in busy areas of a composition.
This, I think, would be a little bit off the paper, just in my mind. So, not going to follow exactly the shape. Going to have a little fun with it. Gonna go, not going to go right up to the edge. I'm going to go a little ways away. And again, I, I kept the white of the paper in the leaves. And now with all this background, you know, going on, the white in those leaves really is standing out. It's really helping them pop off the page a bit more visually. All right, and a bit of a shadow under this one. Light coming from this direction, so there would be perhaps a bit of a shadow over here that we can play with. And now, again, see all this flowing? So I would do shadows that would play with the light, emphasize the shape. So that side, bit of shadow over on this side. Shadow here. Leaf shadow, twig shadow, just following the shapes that are already there. I won't do much uh, really cast shadow over here just because, again, the light source is over here. So doing dark cast shadows on this side probably wouldn't work too well for me. Uh, just be a little too dark. So I'm going to let it go. Looking at it though, I do think I want a little bit more color over there. I don't want to go too orange, so I'm going to take this guy and just really close to these edges, add a smidge more color. Can you see? Again, it's letting the white in those leaves stand out a little bit more. Letting the white of the paper help me make a work of art. There we go. And again, this ties in nicely with these pumpkins. Warm background definitely gives it more of that autumn feel, at least I think. I think it does. Do a bit more accenting with color. All right. Look at those cast shadows. Love it. 
So now we have a background. Not too extreme, nothing too intense, just something to really help emphasize the overall feel and the color scheme and just let us have a little bit of fun. It has that nice finished complete look to it now. Okay, so what's next? You can say, here we are, I've completely covered in, colored in the whole image, it's done, I love it, move on. If you want to, this is the part where you go, can I push myself? Where can I push it? Where can I go a little bit further? And uh, that's something I do sometimes <laughs> if I have the energy, if I drink a lot of coffee, a lot of espresso. Uh, so that means I go back. I go back to the drawing and I say, where can I push everything? And maybe that means adding more layers of color. Maybe that means adding a new medium, uh, more maybe a pen now. Uh, so that's actually something I'm going to do. Because I want to push myself, you know, in terms of creativity, in terms of art. So I grabbed some jelly roll pens. They're fun. And look at the texture in her hair. It is fantastic. I'm going to play with it by just adding touches. Can you see that? A pen, and I chose a brown, just brown jelly roll pen, to go into the shadows. Blend a bit with some of those shadowy areas. And really help them pop just a bit more. And that's something I like to do when I'm coloring a grayscale is push my shadows just a little bit darker with something visually interesting. You could go with a black pen. Um, that'll definitely push the shadows and I've done it. But black is, I don't know, it's almost a all-consuming thing. Once you put black down, that's it. It's black. Whereas when you do other colors, you know, it adds a nice sense of variation, visual interest but it doesn't take over. I mean, if you want it to be very, very, very striking, absolutely. Grab that black pen, go for it. Just doing lines that mimic the texture of her hair too. If you'd noticed, oh, see neck, I go smooth. But with her hair, I'm doing squiggly lines. Not going smooth, not going straight. Having a bit of fun. Pushing my shadows, pushing the texture. And it's okay to push a little bit further when you're coloring. Because again, who cares? It's yours. It's your work of art in your home for your fun. There, look at that. And I like mixing pen over pencil. Just adds a whole new layer, I think, of texture, color. See how 
face right there. I'm going to go a little bit smoother with my application. Look at that. Emphasizing my shadows. And when I emphasize the shadows, you notice it really helps the highlights stand out too. Maybe I'll go a bit here. Finding my shadowy spots. Give them a little bit of push. My pen. Yeah, look at that. How's that looking? Nice and rich. And again, I'm not doing perfectly straight, smooth lines. I mean, these are twigs. I've never seen a perfectly smooth, straight twig before. Adding texture, making it visually more interesting. And I have this whole underdrawing already done. I have these beautiful colors already laid down on here. You know, this great foundation coloring that I've already accomplished. And it just goes back to that concept of layers. I'm just layering on something else. to make the drawing more fun, more fun for me to, to color and more fun for other people to look at. And that pen is really helping the lines stand out a bit more, helping the colors be a little bit more rich. And it can be scary. You know, you put all this work into something and then you're just gonna take a pen and, you know, throw a whole new element all over it, it can mess it up. And, you know, I have messed it up, pushing myself. But that's kind of the point of, you know, coloring and printable coloring pages, especially is you can push yourself, you can try new things, you can mess up. Just go back, try something else. Okay, I think these guys would look awesome with a bit of pen. And I'm not even gonna try to smooth it. I'm just gonna let it stand out. Look at that. These are the stems of the pumpkins. Size a bit of texture there. Yeah, look at that. I love it. All right, we got some leaves. How about some green? Just grabbed a jelly roll. Good old green. Oh, her eyes are green too. 
oh, let's do something with that. Let's add a bit of green. It doesn't need much, I think, to push yourself, to push your drawing. And something to remember is even a little bit of bravery when you color can feel like a lot of bravery. So, hey, I've done this, let's see. Do some lines, some lines. That. Don't always know how something's gonna turn out. Just be a little brave and try. Outline some shape there. And you don't go completely against the grain. I mean, if you, you're pushing, but maybe we'll, we're still moving, you know, with the way the pencil was moved over the paper in the first place. So we're going with the lines that have already been used to draw, with the lines that have already been used to color. We're just pushing it all a little bit further. those stand out. I'm going to add some more right there. Look at that. Whee! Do this one. Oh, we're going to do this one too. Ooh, I like it. little flex of accent just to help these guys really stand out. Look at that. And that's the thing, you don't know until you try. You don't know always how a drawing will look with a certain color, a certain texture, a certain medium. Not until you try. As your area. Do -do. Sometimes I go quiet when I draw and sorry, I just do. <laughs> I get lost in the moment. I get lost in the drawing. I get lost in the fun of the coloring experience.
for me, coloring is a uh, very soothing. Almost meditative time. But you don't get that often with two little kids in the house. So sometimes I can kind of get lost in the moment. Just going to add a few more highlights of this green, or touches of this green here. Not really highlights, more just sort of touches of green. Pull that in. And we're just being brave. We're just pushing a little bit to see how far we can go. We know we can do this, you know, under drawing. We know we can do, you know, the coloring on top with color pencils. But now it's time to push just a little bit. And go a little bit further. And see what else we can get out of this drawing. This line. I'm gonna make it thicker. Look at that. Look at that leaf just sort of stand out. Over here. Come on. Work with me. Thank you. Yes, I talk to my pens and pencils. They don't always listen, but I talk to them. It'd be nice if they listen. There are days when I draw and absolutely nothing listens to me. My pencils don't listen to me. My pens don't listen to me. And that's usually when I have to leave the studio. Try drawing another day. Just going to accent that side a bit. Look at that! So fun! I'm so excited about that. Okay, let's see. What else can we push a little further? How about those berries? Oh, look at this. A red pen. Huh. Let's see what happens. I don't know. The berries, uh, if you saw the other video where I um, colored this in, I only added color to the sides where there was going to be shadow. So that's already a rich spot, full of color and hue. And I'm wondering what it will happen if I just go over that and push those shadows a little bit more, but now with red. Good old mole stick stopping me from smearing my hand over everything. Thank you, mole stick. Just adding a bit in every shadow, just to see what happens. It's helping them stand out a little bit. Especially here. I mean, I used the same colors for her dress. Uh, the dress was actually inspired by the colors that I used in the berries in the first place. But now, wouldn't it be fun if I could get the berries to stand out just a little bit from the dress? So they don't just sort of blend together visually. And a touch of red might help with that. So 
especially red ink. What do we think? Is that giving them a good push visually? It helps them stand out a bit more. Something else you can do, uh, so we're talking about pushing, you know, and I just pushed a bit with the ink, uh, with jelly roll pens. Um, you can go back and push again with pencil, uh, which is something I haven't touched on yet, but let's talk about it right now. So I'm going to look at her dress, for example. I mean, it's great. It's smooth. It's nice and purple. I love it. Uh, what if I want to push it a little bit more? Easily done. I'm going to take my indigo blue. Not black, it's indigo blue. So remember, black just sort of pushes everything and it takes everything. I'm gonna take the indigo blue and I'm gonna push some shadows. So right here, for example. I'm just pushing it a little bit more just to see what happens. I already have my layers of color on there. You know, they've all been blended together. So it's a nice, smooth foundation. And to me, a good foundation is everything when you're trying to do a drawing. You want that, you know, first the base drawing, that grayscale drawing, that was a great start. Then we had layers of color and each layer of color was a good foundation. Now we're pushing it. And we're building up and everything else we did before. Look at that, just push the shadow a little bit gonna push our ourselves a little bit and see what we get Maybe we'll do a little bit of shadow over here where the leaf here casts a shadow. And this guy, this stem, casts a shadow. Look at that. We're even going to get some cast shadows on her. That's fun. Look at those. Same with the berries. Let's put some cast shadows in there. The light is casting a shadow onto her. It wasn't in the original drawing, but who cares? It's fun. This right here, cast shadow. Let's do it. We are pushing it just a little bit further. And yes, yeah, sometimes when I, you know, push my shadows or push colors. I mean, it totally falls apart. I mean, I have absolutely gotten an end result I did not want or expect. But that's part of the experience. And that's how I learn. 
when I do the uh, mental. Well, I'm not going to do that again. Got these nice ripples, folds in the material. Emphasize them a bit more. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Cast shadow. Cast shadow. Look at that. Shadow. And something that's dark moves back. Something that's light comes up towards you. So this dark line here is helping this lighter line come forward a bit more visually. Same over here. We're going to put in a darker line. which helps this lighter area come forward visually. It would help if I could draw a straight line. Thank you. I'm gonna, let's see, we're gonna add a little more right here. A little bit of a line there, a little line there. Yeah, look at that. All right, let's go over here. Definitely would be darker. Look at this shadow over here. And cast shadow. Light is casting a shadow. Shadow. Let's just pause a moment. Let's see. How is that looking? It's pretty good. That's what I was. That's what I was seeing that needed a little bit more. That's why it's good sometimes to pause, take a moment, lean back. It's easy for me anyway to get lost in a drawing, and then I kind of lose track of where I am, what I'm doing. All right, so. Darker area, we're going to do that dark line here, dark shadow here, and that'll help this, again, come forward a bit. Dark steps back, light steps forward. Keep that line. Here's a nice curve. So we can emphasize that a little bit. Curve here. A lot of what grayscale is, is just playing with light and shadow. There we go. Yay! And yes, the light's coming from this direction. Normally would keep this a little bit lighter, but I want to get a nice edge there. 
then I'm allowed to break the rules in my own studio. So we're going to break some rules. Got a little bit more there. Look at that. We just pushed a little bit more, and now we're getting like some really great pop there with the color. It's all about pushing for me. Pushing my colors, pushing myself, seeing what else I can do. Uh, let's see here. Go back a bit. How's that look? Do we want to do that? Yeah, we'll do a little bit. This is that color that we used earlier in this dress color palette. Just want to do an extra bit of color right over it. Especially now that I got those nice rich dark blues in the shadows. What I'm doing is I'm blending it. I'm blending my shadows a little bit to get kind of a smoother transition. Since I just made this fun new effect with my dark blue. Whee. And it's real quick just to add another gentle layer of color. Look at that. Something else just saw. If I see stuff, I just do stuff because we're pushing. We are pushing. Got white. White but gel pen. Let's do it. You know what we're going to do? Going to add a little bit of white in our eye. Boop, 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 boop. Just a slight amount of white dot to make our eyes look a little more reflective. Look at those lips. Let's add little bits of white lines. Make your lips look a little bit more shiny. Pearls. I added just a little bit of pink or peach. I think it's called it was peach to the pearls on one side. Let's add white to the other side and really make them have a fun sense of volume. Boop, boop, boop. This big guy right here. Doesn't really stand out much, huh? Maybe we need to do something else with these. I don't think they're really, um, they're not really standing out yet. Let's see. Finish with our white accents. What can I do? to make these guys really, let's see, we had this, we had that, da, 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 da. you know what, let's do this, what color is this, would that work, I'll go a little bit darker, let's try this one, yeah, we'll try you, he's not sharp enough, okay. Okay, nice sharp, Pencil, let's see, how does that work? Yeah. Blue is blending with the peach. Only putting it on the side with the shadows. That's helping them stand out a little bit more. So I'm not totally going around each pearl or each circle here. I'm only doing color on the side where there would be a shadow. Yep, there it is.
All right, so we pushed her a bit there, pushed her a bit there. What about her skin? Let's see. We have this blue, just used it. I'm gonna go in her shadows now. And push just a little bit more with the blue. Just a little bit. I think this is, yeah, it's true blue. So. Again, we're finding places where we can push the drawing, push ourselves, see what else we can do. When I put blue, um, depending on the skin tone, I try to help it balance with the skin tone. So say I wanted the skin tone to be, you know, a cool skin tone, you know, I could be, be a lot more loose and free with the application of a blue, but I made her skin tone a little bit warmer. So I have to be a bit more sparing where I throw in a blue. Otherwise it just won't look right. And it will blend, remember, with all the other colors we've already put down on the paper. So it's important to keep track of blue when you're mixing it with a pink skin tone because well, blue and red make purple. So just be aware you might be making a purple person. A little bit of blue there. Pushing our shadows. A little bit of blue here. Pushing our shadows. Pushing the whole thing. I like it. The same pink that we used here, I'm going to actually put it here. The tip of the pencil is nice and worn now um, because I just used it to blend all of that which means it's very soft. And soft is great for blending and great for adding a delicate bit of texture, a touch of color, blah, can't talk. Delicate touch of color over all the other layers that we have just done here. And it'll help blend the blue we just added with everything else. Look at that. Keep going there. Blend, blend, blend. There we go. We pushed her just a little bit more. And this is one of those, you know, you can just keep going you can just keep adding more and more colors and really layering you know do you want your her cheeks a little bit rosier then you know make them rosy
once you have you know the foundation done that foundation coloring done it's so easy to go back and keep pushing you know and see how far you can take a drawing and if you take it too far you know if you push a little too much something doesn't quite work it's fine As long as you have fun along the way. stop there uh i've pushed her a little bit but um i think we're running out of time in the studio for today so we're gonna let this go the way it is uh i hope you all enjoyed coloring along with me and i will see you next time in the studio